Mike, there, right? Command Lambda 350, just on 43. Lambda Control, good afternoon, Cyprus 506, heading uh, 290 degrees. Type of strip to represent a different aircraft, we've got all the flight details on the strip. And, uh, and uh, just use it kind of as a tactical way to represent the aircraft. Um, and yeah, uh, different colour codes, we use the yellow ones to represent the inbound, since all the inbounds are going to call me first because I'm working the approach uh, frequency. I've got all the yellow ones over here, all the blue ones we use to represent uh, flights departing the, uh, departing the airport, so they'll work bill first. And we've got another, a couple of more colours because we tend to use pink uh, strips to deal with any uh, any aircraft that are going to be overflying the area, not landing at us, but transiting us. And uh, any local flights are going to depart from us and land back at us without landing away. Um, uh, apart from that, there's, uh, it's a fairly simple system that hasn't really changed since uh, since the inception uh, years ago. As you can see, what we do here, this is uh, all the flight, all the IFR flight planes and, and a few VFR ones. Um, most of those are filed through Brussels. Yeah. Um, uh, so we can just get all these come up in the mornings, and then we write all the scripts out. This little machine here is a printer. So if I highlight one of those flight plans, and then to save writing it all out. We just hit a button, and eventually that will all come out with everything on it. Uh, it's got all your information on. You put that in one of the coloured strips, then that will go over to either one of the controllers. All right. Um, but all these plans go through Brussels, uh, and they determine. Uh, on some we got slots. I don't know if you're aware of the slot situation. Um, the one highlighted here that's got a slot, so it's due out at 10:30, but it's not. It's got a slot of 11:31, so there's a, quite a delay on that. Uh, Formula One. Uh, we have the company Formula One is based here at Biggin. They operate two airliners, two 146s. Uh, they take their technicians out to every race in Europe. So every weekend in the summer, you'll have all the technicians go out on the Thursday, and then after race day, uh, some will come back Sunday night, and the others will come back Monday. Twist 354 London, uh, Roger. Twist 354, report your position. Our position is 50 miles. Technically, uh, a set of procedural approaches and bring things onto the ILS or the VORDLE procedure. But we have contractor approach control out to TENS radar and they will vector uh, pretty much 99% of our traffic onto the ILS just because it's a lot, lot simpler um, than uh, setting up a procedural approach. We do the occasional one just to keep our hand and keep ourselves uh, current. But uh, the majority of our traffic is vectored by TENS radar onto the instrument approach. Thank you. Um, I've said, yeah, it's uh, it's quicker, and they've got a much they've got the radar, so they've got a much better idea of what's out there for passing uh, passing traffic. And at what point in the departure do you get the uh, departures handed over to you from town? Well, for things that are going into the airway system, the approach controller won't actually touch them. What will happen is the airways departure will get to the hold. He will ask me to request a release from the Thames because everything that wants to come to the airways system is released subject to Thames. They will arrange all of our airways departures. He'll pass the details to me whether he can go or not. And once he can go, he, the tower controller passes his details. He'll depart and then he'll pretty much go straight to Thames radar once he's clear of us. 
and again for the instrument inbounds they get set turned onto the ILS about 10 miles and get given to the tower anywhere up to about 6 miles to uh, clear them to land. Approach control, we generally just deal with the stuff that's coming in outside of controlled airspace. Um, purely because it's, uh, like I said, purely because uh, Thames have a radar so it's a lot easier for them to, they've got a much better idea of what's happening out there. Yeah. Coming down this way shortly, followed by number two, coming down this way shortly is blocking that one from going up that way. And now John must make sure that he hasn't got an airplane trying to land on that runway at the same time as he's got one trying to land on this runway. That's your next danger. Because if they both go around, they'll find each other. Here are this the first one establishing on the ILS. We will follow that line all the way down to the ground. The second one will appear on the screen up here shortly. Actually the threshold, you can see it come over the threshold and it will disappear as it goes over the threshold. Um, I'm Kelvin Carr, I'm the Operations Manager for uh, Rochester Airport. Uh, today I'm actually covering the duty of a Flight Information Service Officer, that's a FISO at Rochester, which is the service we provide aircraft in the air and on the ground. Can you zero nine 9 land at your discretion, tree 4, the surface wind, tree zero zero at 20, gusting 30 knots. We uh, met off this uh, hit list for uh, weather warnings and we've just received a thunderstorm and howl warning. So they come through in this kind of format. So the, uh, the header actually says it all and then you've got the information. On here you've actually got the time of issue, the warning number and the valid. So on this particular one, 28th of the... Uh, where is it? 28th. And it's actually valid uh, 12 o'clock until 1900. Any charge of 3 2 to big an approach. Good day. Osprey 6 2, Rochester information. Big uh, morning, readability 5, pass your message. Spray 62 start approved, the temperature 7 degrees Celsius, fixed wing using 3-4, left hand circuit, low level to the west available, and the QNH 9094 millibars.